Okay, in this mini lecture, we'll compute a population variance. So let's recall the formulas for population variance. It should be sigma squared is equal to the sum of x sub i minus mu squared all over capital N. So here's our formula for population variance. But then, if you can recall, we had another formula. Um, this one was the computational formula. Right? And we still use sigma squared equals the sum of x sub i squared minus sigma x sub i squared, and that's over n and all of this is over capital N as well. So this is the computational formula for population variance. It looks a little bit different and it looks like it could be more challenging however some things are not what they seem. Alright so let's take a look at an example. Let's actually go back to our previous example in the other lecture where we computated the population mean where we use the numbers 82 I'll write them all again just in case you didn't watch that video 77 90 71 let's see 62 68 uh, 74 84 uh, 94 and 88. All right, so these are all test scores, let's say, in the statistics class. Um, we're going to make a chart to make things easier. Some of you may or may not like making charts, but I feel making a chart and using descriptive statistics, using these formulas, makes things much easier for me. So the first row will be the X sub I's, the scores. And they're 82, 77, 90, 71, 62, 68, 74, 84, 94, and 88. All right, the next row will be mu. You remember what mu means? Of course we do. That means population mean. So we actually calculated mu in a previous example in the last mini lecture. When we talked about computating the population mean. We did it by hand as well as through Excel. So you can take your choice. But either way, we got the same mean of 79. So the mean will be the same all the way down for each row in the column for mu. So we have 79s all the way down. Okay. The next row is the x sub i minus mu. x sub i minus mu, this row is known as the deviation about the mean. So basically we're just subtracting x sub i minus the mu x sub i minus the mu. So 82 minus 79. I'll write it out the first time. All right. And we get 3. Here we have 77, right, which is x sub i minus mu. All right. Signs are different, so we subtract, take the sign of the larger number, and we get a negative 2. All right, so then I'll go down the line and 90 and 79, 79 and 71 should give us a negative 8, 79 and 62 should give us a negative 17, 68 and 79 should give us a negative 11, 74 and 79 should give us a negative 5, 84 and 79 should give us positive 5, 79 from 94 should give us 15. 
and our last one is 88 minus 79 gives us 9. All right, let's make one more column. <clears throat> this will be x sub i minus mu and then squared. Right, so this is the squared deviations about the mean. The last row was deviations about the mean. This time we're squaring deviations about the mean. So basically all we need to do is take our results from this row and square it. So I'll write it over just so we can see the steps. 3 squared equals 9. Here negative 2 squared equals 4. Right? And I don't need to write all the other ones out like that. I'll just give you the answers. 121, 64, um, you may need a calculator. 17 times 17 is 289. All right, 11 squared is 121. Negative 5 squared is 25. Positive 5 squared is 25. Uh, 15 squared is 225. And 9 squared is 81. So one more thing I'd like to do is let's just sum all of these up. Sum all of the deviations about the square mean up. So if we sum them up we get 0. Right? So you can plug that into your calculator or do it by hand. Positive 3, negative 2, positive 11, negative 8, negative 17 and so on all add up to 0. <clears throat> Let's sum this one up as well. So if we sum up the square deviations about the mean 9, 4, 121, 64, 289, 121, 25, 25, and 225, and 81, we come up with a total, a grand total of 964. So you could pop those into your calculator or do them by hand, and you should come up with 964. Okay. Let's go to another page. All right. So we said the let's bring the formula back. We said the formula was sigma squared equals the sum of x sub i minus mu squared over n. Well, we calculated this already. Oops. And if we look at our previous page, let's go back. The sum of all these square deviations is 964. Right. So basically, this part right here is the 960. Sorry. Nine sixty four, and we divide that by n, and we said that n is our total number of data values within that population. There were ten test scores there, so we divide that by ten. So sigma squared will be nine sixty four divided by ten. So let's see what that comes out to be. Pop that into a calculator, 964 divided by 10, we get 96 and 4 tenths. Okay. So sigma squared is 96 and 4 tenths. So the population variance is 96 and 4 tenths. So let's take time out to do this the second way using the computational formula. Let's try another sheet. All right, once again, I'm going to make a little chart. And I have it written down in front of me, so I can just copy my chart over 82, 77, we said it's 90, 71. Uh, 62, let's see, uh, 68, 
74, 84, 94, and 88. Okay, so let's remember that these are our x sub i data values. So now let's say what about the score squared? X, oops, let's make that better. X sub i squared. Okay. So 82 squared gives us 6,724. 77 squared is 5,929. 90 squared is 8,100. 71 squared is 5,041. 62 squared is 3,844. Uh, 68 squared is 4,624. 74 squared is 5,476. 84 squared <clears throat> is 7,056. 94 squared is 8,836. And 88 squared is 7,744. All right, we sum up all of the data values. It adds up to 790. And if we sum up all of the x sub i's that we squared, pop these into calculators, we'll get about 63,374. <clears throat> right? So let's make note of these two values 790 and 63,374. All right, let's use another sheet of paper and go back to our formula. Okay, <clears throat> our computational formula was sigma squared is equal to the sum of x sub i squared minus the sum of x sub i, let me square that, all over n, and all divided by n. So if we plug in the sum of the x sub i's squared, let's look back on our previous sheet, looks to be 63,374. So we'll say 60, oops. Sixty three thousand three hundred and seventy four minus the sum of all the x sub i's look back seven ninety. Okay, so we have seven ninety. We like to square that and divide it by ten. Excuse me. Now we'll say six thousand three sixty three thousand three hundred and seventy four minus seven ninety squared comes to sixty two thousand and I lost it six hundred twenty four thousand one hundred divided by ten 
and this is all over. Okay. So let's go back and rewrite what we had. We have sixty three thousand three hundred seventy four minus six hundred twenty four thousand one hundred divided by ten all over ten. Let me make sure that's correct. Okay. If I do all of that math, sigma squared, if you plug this into your calculator, 624,100 divided by 10, get a result. Subtract it from 63,374, you should come up with 960. Alright, so this whole top portion. Should come out to 960. And we're dividing it by 10, so sigma squared equals 96. <coughs> Actually, I'm sorry, this should be 964. If you punch that in, you'd have seen a different result than that 960, and you, you should have been saying, oh, there's an error there. So I caught my error. It's 964 when I punch all of that in. So 964 divided by 10 gives us 90, sigma squared is 96 and 4 tenths. And that's the same result we got with the other formula. So that was with two different formulas, which are one and the same, but you can choose which formula is best for you.